All right, so the first thing we need to do is come gather up our materials. Um, no shortage of woods, woods here, that's for sure. Uh, a lot of my property, probably the big majority of it, is uh, beech trees, though I have a good variety. Uh, quite an, an abundance of wood. Uh, but we're going to gather some of this beech because it's really prevalent here and we're not going to hurt anything. So we'll grab some of this and get to it. So where people typically mess this up, not that there's a right or wrong way really. I probably could have just cut with this, this with the saw to begin with, but whatever. So yeah, so where people typically mess this up is uh, their poles are way too short and uh, again there's no right or wrong but you know if you're solo you want a quick little tripod uh, something you can use with a campfire uh, that's fine when you're trying to cook over a big fire you need a big tripod obviously Alright, so we got our three poles here, pretty substantial in length, and we'll get to that, but uh, let's talk about lashing this thing. Um, you know, this is obviously nothing new guys, uh, tripods, there's um, probably a million at least videos on it, but I just want to show you how we do it up north here. So I'm just going to grab a hank of cordage here. I got enough to do this whole setup. But uh, get my woodcraft knife here. So again, no shortage of videos on how to actually lash this thing uh, what I will tell you is you don't need to get crazy with it all right so in this particular case uh, my wife has become pretty fond of this cook system so I'm actually building this for her and we're gonna trick it out a little bit here as we go but uh, uh, right here in my yard I'm not way out in the wilderness or anything but I'm just gonna create a simple overhand knot in my cordage here so I have something to pull against so just a little create a little loop come up here by the top pull the rest of my cord through and cinch it down about that tight so again I don't need to stand on this and get crazy with wrapping this because and I'll pull against it and go in the opposite direction a few times as far as the tripod goes, I'm not going to do any frapping or anything like that. So that's what that means in case you don't know. Is once you start wrapping, then you would go in between your pieces here and wrap the cordage together. And that's called frapping. Uh, again, I don't think you need to get too crazy with this. And I'm not going to. Just a simple as tight as I can pull it without getting nuts about it is all I'm gonna do <clears throat> a few more wraps once I get short I'll go under what I've wrapped which is 
again what you'd call frapping but I'm not really frapping I'm just giving my something yeah <laughs> giving myself something to tie off to get a little quick with my tongue there leave a little loop throw a couple half hitches in that again nothing crazy I'm not cinching down I'm not using anything to aid me in tying this super duper tight so that's it again I'm not gonna get too crazy I wrapped it as tight as I could with my hands without getting over crazy with it now that's gonna tighten up when I stand this thing up and spread the legs out right so hence the reason I don't need to go overboard with this um, it'll be fine like it is all right so now we'll just stand it up get it spread out and uh, move on to the next next piece here I think you can see how I'm walking the pieces around, which is tightening up my lashing up there. Uh, not a big deal. I don't need to get crazy with that. Alright, looks pretty good. Alright, so our next piece, which is our cross piece, also known as the galley pole so this is what we're gonna hang all of our pots and pans and all that stuff from uh, as well as having the ability you know to cook down low right in the coals or over the flame or what have you and I will get to that in future videos but again so our cross piece known as the galley pole is gonna go like such and all we need to do is lash this onto either end uh, and in this case, you want to be a little bit more particular on your uh, lashing. So in this case, I will do, you know, a, a couple series of frapping and what have you, because typically I'm going to have a lot of weight on this galley pole uh, to the tune that I've had multiple pots hanging over this thing, uh, as well as a Dutch oven all simultaneously. So uh, these lashings I want to be a little bit more particular than we did with the tripod. So take our length of cordage, cut it to length obviously, put our knife back. And again just a simple overhand knot creates a loop for us so we have something to pull against starting the lashing out. So I'll check my height here see where I need it, mark that one side, and start lashing. Come around, pull through the loop, I'll pull it against itself, do a wrap or two, and here's where I'm going to start frapping. So here's where I go in between the poles, basically trying to tighten up on the cordage itself, and I'll do a couple more wraps before I start fastening it down. Take it down. A couple half hitches to finish it off. Check it. Looks good. Same thing on the other side, right? Get a length of cordage. Usually double arms length works well, I find. Again, simple overhand knot, create a loop, bring it up level, wrap it around, bring my cordage through the loop, just like we've done two other times now. Wrap 
flop it around a couple of times. And again, we'll stop the frapping just in between the poles. Again, cinch it down as best you can with your hands. You don't need to get ridiculous with this and use, use any tools or anything like that. And I just tie off to my tag end. When I'm done, check it. Good. Check the whole thing. Looks good. Alright guys, so there it is. Again, at least a million videos on how to do this. But uh, you need to concern yourself with how big of a tripod do you need and what, what are you trying to accomplish. So up here in the north with uh, you know canoe trips and snowshoe trips and that sort of thing, you need a pretty big one. Uh, and having one right here by the house for the wife and again I'm going to end up tricking this thing out a little bit and uh, you'll see that as we go along here but again I think where people make their mistake in building these things is uh, the size of them uh, not necessarily what they use for lashing and what type of fancy knot they're using to hold this stuff together but you know is it big enough to do what you need to do uh, and for all intents and purposes if you're doing this for yourself you don't need a very big one like this but uh, again this affords me on guided trips to cook for a big group have a good big fire under here and I uh, have multiple things going on at the same time and again we'll get to that as well so thanks for joining me on the uh, first installment of the uh, woodcraft kitchen here main guide style and uh, looking forward to this series and sharing some different things uh, that I've picked up along the way with you all. Take it easy.